when gardeners ask me, is there any way to get rid of fire ants, I say no. I've tried everything with the exception of burning it all down. And I'm quite sure they would just move back in the next day. I honestly cannot think of anything more frustrating, irritating, or purposeless than the red imported fire ant. So let's talk about it. The red imported fire ant, AKA RIFA, AKA Demon, AKA Millimeter Demon, is native to the state of Mato Grosso in Brazil. Though South American in origin, the red imported fire ant has been accidentally introduced into Australia, New Zealand, several Asian and Caribbean countries, and the United States. It was introduced in the United States at Mobile, Alabama at about 1940. The exact date and method of introduction is not known. It spread rapidly throughout the southeastern United States during the 1940s and 50s and is presently found in 14 states from North Carolina and Florida west to portions of California. Due to its notoriety and importance, the ant has become one of the most studied insects on the planet, even rivaling the western honeybee. Red imported fire ant Invicta derives from Latin meaning invincible or unconquered. The fire ant part is because of the burning sensation caused by its sting. The fire ant is a small ant with workers varying from 1 8 to 1 4 inch long. The red imported fire ant is polymorphic as workers appear in different shapes and sizes. The ant's colors are red and somewhat yellowish with a brown or black gaster, but males are completely black. They are similar in appearance to many of our common house and field ants. New colonies are formed by one or more winged mated female queens following a mating flight. The mated queens find suitable nesting sites, shed their wings, and begin digging underground chambers in which to lay eggs. The first eggs and larvae are cared for by the queen. They emerge as small workers after three to four weeks. Thereafter, the workers care for the queen in the brood, forage for food, and expand the nest. They can be found in rainforests, disturbed areas, deserts, grasslands, alongside roads and buildings, and in electrical equipment. Colonies from large mounds constructed from soil with no visible entrances because forage and tunnels are built and workers emerge far from the nest. An undisturbed colony can increase in size rapidly and may contain 10,000 or more workers after one year. A mature colony, three years old, may contain 100,000 to 500,000 workers in several hundred winged forms. Fire ants also exhibit a wide variety of behaviors, such as raiding termite colonies like in this video, to kill and feed to larvae which can digest them. They also build rafts when they sense that water levels are rising. They can also show necrophoric behavior, where nestmates discard scraps or dead ants on refuse piles outside the nest. Foraging takes place on warm or hot days, although they may remain outside at night. Workers communicate by a series of semiochemicals and pheromones, which are used for recruitment, foraging, and defense. They are omnivores and eat dead animals, arthropods, insects, seeds, and sweet substances such as honeydew from hemipteran insects which they have developed relationships with. Predators include arachnids, birds, and many insects including other ants, dragonflies, earwigs, and beetles. The biggest problem with the red imported fire ant is probably its sting. The workers can sting repeatedly and attack anything that disturbs their mounds or food sources. Symptoms of the sting include burning and itching, followed by the development of a pustule that may take a week or more to heal. Scratching these pustules can lead to secondary bacterial infections and can leave permanent scars. As usual with insect stings, certain persons are hypersensitive to the fire ant venom and may suffer chest pains or nausea or lapse into a coma from one sting. Birds and small animals can be harmed or are occasionally killed by fire ant stings. They will also sting poultry and domestic animals. The presence of fire ants in crops or gardens may prevent handpicking of fruits and vegetables because of the threat of stings. The presence of mounds may damage harvesting equipment. In cities, fire ants sometimes nest in electrical circuitry and they have been known to short out air conditioners, get in telephone junks and boxes, traffic and light control boxes, and in transformers. They sometimes nest under sidewalks or highways and as the colony dies out, the area of the nest will sink and cause a pothole. Damage to plants occur under some conditions. They will feed on germinating seeds, causing damage to corn and soybeans. They also feed on buds and developing fruits of crops such as beans, berries, okra, and citrus. They may girdle young trees in an attempt to find a source of water. Fire ants also feed on the honeydew produced by aphids. They often tend aphids on plants, and the aphids damage the plants by feeding their activities. Today, it is unlikely that the red imported fire ant will be eradicated in areas such as the United States.
populations can be managed properly if an integrated approach is used. Some scientists have considered using the ant's natural enemies against it. This includes a specific pathogen and a specific parasitic fungi. Forest flies have also been viewed as potential biological agents as they can reduce foraging activity in red imported fire ants and affect population levels. However, they are unable to affect colony growth. In addition, parasitic ants, parasitic wasps, mites, other pathogens, nematodes, and fungi have been considered to be potential biological agents. Others suggest that populations can be maintained or reduced by manipulating several ecological factors. In general, non-chemical methods are ineffective against fire ants. Digging up or tilling mounds usually results in dispersal of ants or movement of nests. However, boiling water is reportedly a fairly effective treatment for individual ant mounds. Approximately three gallons of hot water poured over a mound will eliminate nests about 60% of the time. Surviving nests would need retreatment. This method may work in certain situations, but care must be taken not to pour hot water on desired plants. Also, extreme care should be exercised when handling large volumes of hot water to avoid serious burns. Several baits have been used to control populations. Mounds are destroyed in a matter of weeks if baits are used on them. Baits are considered to be effective and simple to use against red imported fire ants in comparison to drenching, dusting, or fumigating them.